That's true. If I need that, Mike, I, you, let's let's get this fired up to make sure it's rocking because I turned it off. Yep. And I can turn that mic down if you want. Okay. Nope. Only three. Okay. Only okay. three at any given so, moment. My battery died. So I'm gonna plug in. We got another AC close. We can find it. I got my power supply. Yeah, if you give me the power supply, I'll dive back there and do it. You should do it. Of course, the nine, the nine volt goes down. Of course. course. Right on time. Of course. That's the way it always goes. Yeah, every time. Every time. I'll keep that. All right. Sure it is. Of course, it's behind all this jump. Yeah. All right, how's everybody doing? Good? All right. Thanks, Bax. Hang on here. You know, typically, this always happens. I've got a power supply for the condenser mic we're using, and the 9-volt battery, of course, died right before the gig. Don't worry. I fixed it. <laughs> Probably true. All right. I'll let you put that thing where you sort of want it. Yeah. There we go. Got it? Yep. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> All right. Come on in. Grab a seat. Ah, uh, OK. Well, hey, everybody. Uh, first off, I want to, th whoop, whoop. It's a live gig. It's a live gig, live, live music, that's how it goes. Much better than dead gig than dead music. <laughs> True. All right, well, first off, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, my name is Don Rodriguez, and I want to tell you that we are streaming live on the internet tonight. <gasps> Casino guitars, so, yeah. right? Let's rock the house tonight. Okay, again, my name's Don Rodriguez. I'm the Southeast rep for Taylor Guitars. I cover from Key West all the way to Philly, all the way west to Tennessee, and boy, are we having fun. Tonight, we're gonna actually go on a little bit of a journey here. I'm gonna take you through the timeline of Taylor Guitars. This year is our 50th anniversary. Bob Taylor and Kurt Listig started the company in 1974. So 50 years, we only get one time to celebrate our 50th anniversary. And what I've done is brought our series of 50th anniversary limited edition guitars that we're gonna go through tonight and play a few of them. Round of applause at the beginning here for my sidekick, Jonathan, that's gonna be our artist tonight. And a big thank you to Baxter and Casino Guitars for hosting us tonight, okay? Now, I want to do a special announcement here. Uh, first, let me ask, how many own a Taylor guitar? All right, this is important. How many own multiple Taylor guitars? All right, well, the goal tonight is to inspire you to either get your first Taylor or at least think about it, and maybe inspire some of you to add to your collection. And to help in doing that, Baxter has graciously agreed to a discount tonight, because we're doing the presentation here, of 10% off any of our Tecate manufactured guitars in Tecate, Mexico, and 15% off, that's big, of our USA manufactured guitars. Now tonight, USA. <laughs> Tonight, uh, the journey we're going to go through, like I said, is from the beginning of Taylor Guitars in 1974 
through the decades and what guitars Bob and team have brought to the forefront over that timeline. And we're going to demonstrate some of those guitars as we go through the decades. So starting out in 1974 on the Wayback Bus, Bob Taylor and Kurt Listig, 19 years old and 21 years old, respectively. Think about that. And they started in a little shop called American Dream in Lemon Grove. It's a suburb of San Diego. And when I say little shop, I mean it was only 1,500 square feet. That's about the size of this, I think. Right, Baxter? About 1,500. And they were producing just a few guitars a month to start out. And over the years, we've expanded now to 3,000 square feet. And as we go through the timeline, we also have our factory now in Tecate, Mexico, where we manufacture our what we affectionately call our Tecate guitars, and also our cases and gig bags. So getting started out, uh, let me check my notes here. Uh, as many of you know, the, uh, we're going to play, you may not know actually, we're going to play through the Circa 74 amp, which is brand new. We released this amp earlier this year. This is a new addition to our line of Taylor products. It's 150 watts. It's designed by Bob Taylor and team. I'm miking it through a condenser microphone. We're not plugging in direct, and that is because I want to talk about tone wood as we move through the guitars. It's important to mic the guitar so we can hear the different uh, nuances of the different woods of the guitar. If we were to plug straight in, you would just be hearing the pickup and the nuances of that. So I'm um, using a condenser mic. People ask me, what kind is that? Is it expensive? It's a $130 Shure condenser mic. So if you're into micing your guitar acoustically, uh, this is what we would suggest. All right, so four parts. The first decade is 74 to 84, and that's when Bob and Kurt started the business in Lemon Grove. The first official series, if you might remember, was the 800 series back in that decade. And what Bob was known for was the 800 series Dreadnought and, of course, our 12-string guitar back in that decade. And what really helped Bob back in that decade was a person, a little artist named Neil Young. Neil Young made our 12-string Taylor guitar very popular. Uh, he played it in one of his movies, and it really helped move along Taylor guitars, especially with that 12-string. And of course, our 12-strings played great because of Bob's design with the neck. It was very uh, easy to play. It supported that big body 12-string really well. It was solid all the way up to the bout where it connected. And where we are today, Jonathan is going to demo our current rev of our 12-string. This is a Builder's Edition 652 CE. One of the important facets of our 12-strings, may I Absolutely. grab the guitar just for Please a minute? Do. I like to show the guitar like this, especially to our streaming folks. We have what's called a dual compensated saddle, meaning that it raises all the strings to the same playing level or plane, which means it's very easy to press down on the strings. You don't have this roller coaster effect that most 12 string guitars have had over the years. And of course, this is the builder's edition version. I'm going to talk more about it as we move along that has special beveled cutaways, unique feel to it. Let's give this one a try and see how it sounds through our Circa 74.
<laughs> Actually, let's get this. Why don't you grab this I one guess. and I'll put this one over here. Yep, sounds like a plan. Okay, it's got the big headstock. So as we move into the next decade, the early 70s, Bob Taylor was the design guy and Kurt was the business guy and they made a great team they still do today of course so as Bob built the guitars Kurt had an old Volvo station wagon in those in those times the early 80s so he would fill up the Volvo with maybe four ten guitars if that many and he would drive around trying to sell these guitars to everybody and lo and behold he would come back with an empty station wagon and checks in the briefcase <laughs> they wrote checks back in those times, right? Mm. So it was a good day when Kurt came back with no guitars in the Volvo. But that decade saw a little change in everything. That was the classic rock disco era, uh, the early 80s kind of. And the, the musical tastes in acoustic guitars were changing. And what Kurt brought back to Bob was that a lot of artists were saying, you know, we really love your guitars, but do you have anything a little bit smaller that might be easier to play? So that's when Bob came up with the grand concert model, if I may. The grand concert size is a little smaller body shape, and this particular one is a 512. Anything ending in a two is a grand concert size. This particular one is also a 12 fret. If you notice, it joins the body at the 12th fret. The bridge is a little lower in the lower bout, giving this guitar a really smooth, slinky, easy playing style, at the same time giving you a lot of oomph on the low end because of that lowering of the bridge a little bit. A grand concert guitar responds super well to a light touch yet it can articulate really well if you get a little more active or aggressive with it. This size guitar records exceptionally well. In my early years, I was also a recording engineer, and I can tell you that miking a smaller body guitar like a Grand Concert, uh, engineers love it because there's not a lot of errant overtones that you get with a big jumbo guitar swirling overtones all over the place this is nice and focused and articulate so let's give this one a ride <laughs> Sweet. Let's do a giveaway. Woo! You got your raffle tickets? All right, now, if we call your name and you win something, keep your ticket because the grand prize is that GS Mini, this one right here. So it's a small group tonight. Sorry, you folks on the internet. You don't get the raffle tickets, but somebody here is going to win. So. Uh, where did he go? We're going right to choose. There you are. Choose one, please, if you will, and uh, we'll get you the first uh, set of prizes here. All right, we got 1025768. All right, there we go. We have a winner. Let's get him one. All right. There you go. By the way, as we're doing this, have you all picked out the guitar that you want to take home yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I'll help you out here. You know, again, my job is education and inspiration, okay? <laughs> 
Well, the next decade, we're talking about, uh, you know, 80, the late 80s into the 90s. And this is the area, if you recall, where MTV was coming out really big. Uh, there's a little known artist known as, other known as Prince, otherwise known as Prince. Uh, Bob built a purple guitar for him, which further helped uh, build Taylor Guitar's reputation out there in the artist field. And that was also the time with MTV, if you recall the era of Unplugged. Mm -hmm. That's when Unplugged came about, and that really helped propel not only Taylor Guitars, but all acoustic makers during that era. And it was at that time that Bob actually came out with a new guitar shape called the Grand Auditorium. Let me hold this one up. The Grand Auditorium <clears throat> is what we affectionately call the Swiss Army knife of our guitar shapes. It basically was designed by Bob for comfort. It's got a nice pinched in waist while still a nice large lower bout to get a lot of that oomph on the low end. It's got the Taylor neck, which I'm gonna talk about in just a little bit, a very playable, nice and slim neck that is very uh, durable and fits perfectly on the body. Like I said, I'm gonna talk about it in a little bit. But the Grand Auditorium model, if you have one Taylor guitar, it's usually gonna be this. This will get you through all sorts of gigs. It plays very well with a light touch, but being that it is a little larger guitar, it can really take the aggressive playing and has a very high shelf uh, end sonically to this guitar. So let's give this one a try. This is one of our builder's editions. Uh, it is, before you play, I wanna continue on just a little bit more. You might notice the top, this is interesting. This is called Sinker Redwood. It's rosewood back and sides, a 50th edition 814 CE with the 50th label provenance, limited edition, Sinker Redwood. What does that mean? I often ask, who are the people that find that wood? It has to be 100 years old or older to be certified Sinker Redwood. And it's only found in the bottom of freshwater streams. There's a limited amount until they find more, and we'll keep building them as long as we have wood. If you're looking for a great collector guitar, this would be it. It sounds as great as it looks. Give it a whirl, Jonathan. Let's do another giveaway. You ready? Yeah. All right, come on. Who's the next winner? Who do you got? Let's see who we got here. 102 5761. All right. Woo! Yeah, I love it. All right, well, I want to talk about the Taylor neck. This is uh, the next era of innovation with Bob Taylor. Uh, the Taylor neck is really a great design. If you know anything about acoustic guitars, you know, in the early era and even through today, a lot of acoustic guitars have what we call glued on necks right? They take the neck, they glue it to the body, and the only way to adjust it is to either unglue it or shave down the saddle a little bit, which I call a one-way street. You know, once you shave it down, you're about done. Bob came out with the Taylor neck 
And this iteration is the one that we've been using for years. I'm gonna pass this around. What's important about this neck is that it has two screws that go in this way and one screw that goes in this way. So it's actually a bolt-on neck. Even if you look at the necks, it's hard to tell. You might think that it is glued on, but it's actually a bolt-on neck. What makes this very unique and really top of the heap? It is one piece of wood all the way up to the end of the fretboard. Mm. What does that do? It makes the stability where this bolts onto the upper bout of the guitar absolutely incredible for staying in tune, staying set up the way you like your guitar set up. So when I pass this around, take a look. It's all one piece of wood. Everything is carved through a CNC uh, computer-controlled machine that we have both in our El Cajon factory and in our Tecate factory. So therefore, we have a series of shims for up here and down here where it butts up against it. So if you need your guitar set up for your playing style or God forbid it's fallen over or gotten adjusted or was left out and you need to adjust the neck, a certified tech can adjust this neck in 20 to 30 minutes. As opposed to hot ungluing the neck of your guitar, trying to fiddle with it, gluing it back on, and doing what I call praying that it's set up correctly. <laughs> All right, with a series of shims and a bolt on, it's absolutely awesome. Let's pass this around, take a look at it, and uh, yes, sir. with the resonance of it or no 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 it's seated in there really nice and you're hearing the resonance yeah it sounds really good it's, I it's never would have thought it was a bolt on that's right that's right that's what makes our necks really really superior all right the other thing that happened during that decade is uh, our ES2 let me grab this if you wouldn't mind Which decade are we in still? we are now into the two th late 90s into 2000s Yes, let's go. Hey, online people, how you doing? All right, let's talk about the ES2. This pickup is world renowned. It was designed with the help of Sir Rupert Neve. If any of you have been in the audio business or in uh, the music business at all, you've heard the term Neve. Uh, what can I say? An icon in the audio business and this pickup was uh, co-designed with him. If you look at our guitars, there's what looks like three screws right here behind the saddle. Those are actually three posts that are wound, drilled right into the bridge, right up behind the saddle, patented and only available with Taylor guitars. It's another one of the reasons why people love our guitars. Since the pickups are right behind the saddle, this is the way I like to describe it. You cannot get any closer to the source of your strings than right there. That's it. As opposed to a piezo pickup somewhere in the guitar, somewhere around here. The other part of our ES2 system are the control knobs up here. We all know what a tone, a, a treble, and a bass, and a volume do. It's usually zero to 10. Well, these, the tone, uh, the treble, and the bass are actually parametric EQs, meaning 12 o'clock is actually zero. So if you want to take away some bass, move it to 11, move it to nine. If you want to add some bass, kick it up to two, kick it up to three. It's a much more <laughs> finer tuning way of adjusting the EQ on your guitar. Absolutely incredible. So the ES2 pickup system is only available on Taylor guitars. Here's one little thing I want to tell you. Even on our guitars that are less expensive, a lot of our guitars under $2,000, under $1,500 have the same pickup system. In fact, this GS Mini that we're giving away today and we're going to talk about has the same pickup system. This pickup system is used in all of our guitars, including, well, all the ones that 
are deemed for the ES2. Some of them don't. Uh, that pickup system is the same one we use, get this, in our $10,000 and $20,000 guitars. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So if you buy a Taylor guitar and it has that, what a value. What a value, OK? So while I'm getting the next one set up, let's do another giveaway. Woo! All right? Yeah. All right, this little baby. Hey, what's up online, folks? All right, let's remind everybody. If it's a Takate guitar, this is a Takate guitar. 10% off tonight. I'm going to put the advertisement out here just for a minute. If it's an El Cajon or a USA-made guitar, 15% off, right? Now, the GS Mini is arguably I don't want to argue it because I think it's a fact. It's, it's the hottest guitar known to mankind for the best travel guitar ever made. Amen. Amen. This guitar, believe it or not, this year we are going to manufacture our 500,000th GS Mini. 500, how about a round of applause for that one? 500,000 GS Minis. Oh my lord. Unbelievable. The GS Mini stands for Grand Symphony. This is actually a Grand Symphony guitar. I don't have one here, but it's, a, it's the next step up. Honey, I shrunk the kids, basically, OK? This guitar travels really well. This particular one, again, is our 50th anniversary. It's got the provenance label on the inside. It's rosewood back and sides. It's a Sitka spruce top. It's got that expensive pickup system in it. Right? This guitar travels really well. It's a layered guitar made in our Tecate factory in Mexico. Again, when we say our Mexican factory, uh, Bob and Kurt built that factory with the exact same machinery that we have in our USA factory. So all the machines, all the tooling machines, all the CNC machines. And by the way, it's a 45-minute drive factory to factory. When people think of, oh, that guitar was made in Mexico, or did it come from China? Did it come on some container ship and go through all the elements? Nope. 45 minute drive with our trucks and we pick them up in Takati. By the way, we manufacture our hard shell cases and gig bags there as well. Uh, so this guitar doesn't have any back bracing. What's really cool about that is it's layered. So we have a layer of rosewood, an inner layer of poplar usually or some other good hardwood, and then another inner layer of rosewood. It has a bowed back that helps with the structural integrity of the guitar. Therefore, it has great expression. It's got good tonal sound to it because of the nature of the wood. And you're going to be surprised how well this guitar sounds. Mic'd up. Jonathan, do your magic. Soft to loud. Notice that? Very expressive on the high end. Very articulate on the softer side.
We're going to move now into the Andy Powers era. This is uh, around 2010, where uh, Bob brought on Andy Powers, our current CEO and master luthier, who really helped push Taylor into the future with a lot of his designs. And uh, also, uh, what we started doing is getting into Taylor wear. I want to talk about this little guy right now that we just released. Uh, at last year at the end of the year. This is our new Taylor Beacon tuner tool. It's not only a tuner, it has a countdown, it has a timer, it has uh, five tuning modes on there, and it's got a light on the back. This is a really cool tuner with kind of like an iPhone uh, gla it's not glass, but it, it looks really good. It's bright. It's easy to see. Let's pass it around. And you know what? Baxter, should I give one away? Heck yeah. Should I give away a, a beacon tuner? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah all right. Go ahead and pick, pick a winner there. <laughs> Who do we have? Check your tickets. Oh, yes. All right. Here you go. Right here. Right here. Yeah, keep your ticket. Keep your ticket. All right. We want you to keep your tickets, okay? Uh, all right. Hey, let's talk a little bit about our V bracing. Did the neck make it around to everybody? Okay. Yeah, all right. Cool deal. Uh, Andy Powers was, like I said, has really pushed and helped bring our company forward into this decade by redesigning some things that really helped put Taylor light years ahead of other guitar makers. The, one of the biggest advancements that we've had is our V bracing. Now this is an example of an X brace guitar. This is literally what's under the top of a guitar. Martin Guitars came up with X bracing in the mid 1800s. That's how long and tried and true it's been around. Now we still make some X brace guitars, but Andy came up with what we call V bracing. I call it two chopsticks. <laughs> kind of looks like two chopsticks, right? But V bracing brings to the forefront a couple of added things to the guitar building business and the end user, which is it's louder. Notice that the center line is more rigid with V bracing right up the center as opposed to breaking up those audio waves with an X. As the sound exits the guitar, it doesn't break up those audio waves. It goes straight up. So we get more sustain, we get a louder guitar, and another byproduct is it's more in tune because it's so much more rigid up the center line all the way up through the peg head. Our guitars with V bracing actually have better intonation. So let's pass this around just so you all can take a look at it. Now what I want to come up with next is let's play this one, Jonathan. Woo! All right. I'll talk about it in just a second here. This is our, here, why don't you hand it back real quick. This is another of our 50th anniversary limited guitars. It's a Builder's Edition 314 CE. Now let's talk about what makes the Builder's Edition series of guitars one onto itself. I get a lot of customers that ask me, well, I'd like to build a guitar and I want the armrest like the Builder's Edition and I want this curve like the builder's edition sorry we can't do it if you want these sort of what we call accoutrements they're only available with our builder's edition guitars if any of you are into movies you've heard of what's called a director's cut where they got the extra scenes in the movie well our builder's edition series of guitars have a bunch of extra cool things that are only available on builders again this is a 50th anniversary model first thing i'll tell you it's got what we call chamfered edges meaning it's beveled around the edges of the guitar front and back 
It's got an armrest right here. Uh, I was with a gentleman earlier uh, this evening, and I said, you know, you won't even notice that armrest until I tell you. And then you're going to go, oh, that's so comfortable, because it really is. The other thing that a Builder's Edition guitar has is a cutaway up here, a bevel up here. The other thing a Builder's Edition guitar has are beveled edges along the fretboard. And of course, we have the highest end tuners we could possibly use, Godo 510s. These tuners are what we call 21 to 1 gear ratio. 21 turns of the peg is one turn of the post. You're like, is this thing ever going to tune up? Oh my god. That's the sign of a really good tuner, really good uh, holding its tone right there. Now, also, this Builder's Edition guitar is rosewood back and sides, and it's got what we have, a silent satin finish. A silent satin finish is different than a satin finish or a glossy. It's the type of finish, by the way, if you've ever played a gloss guitar or a guitar and you sweat a little bit, you might squeak with your arm or on the back of the neck. The silent satin finish does not squeak. Nothing's worse than having a perfect take in the studio and having to redo it because you got that awful squeak going on, right? So that's what's going on there. Let's give this one a play. Wow, any questions so far? I can open it, yes. They wanted to see the bevel just a little bit better online. If you can just turn the guitar and you know. I'll let you do it up there. In. Sure. So if they want to make demand, they should. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. They said, I'm sorry, I couldn't make it. Yeah, right there. Hold it a little higher, they said. There you go, that's good. And then is there a? Right in here. Okay. Perfect, thanks, Tom. Sure, no problem. Now, as we get down into the era where we are now, Bob and Kurt are, you know, they're heading towards retirement. What are they going to do with the company? Well, uh, lucky for me and my partners, uh, they actually sold the company to all the employees. So how about that? Yeah. You know, it's really important for the legacy of Taylor uh, the way I like to explain this is to not be taken over by corporate America, venture capitalists, and you never know what's going to happen. We have people that have been with Taylor Guitars 20 and 30 years that helped build the company. And so what better legacy for Taylor Guitars than to have the legacy continue on by people that actually build the guitars that are actual musicians and actually help build the company. So I'm very proud and blessed to be part of that group. Now, along with that, it allowed Bob Taylor to continue his uh, sustainability uh, initiatives. Now, I want to talk about Taylor and sustainability. We're one of the few companies that's very important for us to build our guitars in a sustainable fashion so that there's wood and guitars for our grandkids' grandkids. And in doing so, we have what's called the Acrylicam or Ebony Project, where <coughs> Bob invested 
with uh, a, a partner in Krelikam, Africa, for one of the very last, if not the last, legal ebony mill in the world, an ebony forest, where we actually replant the ebony trees as we harvest them for all of our ebony. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Now, the same thing, the same thing is true for koa. And what Johnson's going to play next is a koa guitar. This is a 724, all koa, top, back, and sides. Now, koa, if you don't know, comes from the island of Hawaii. If you dropped a pin on that island, it would only be Bob's koa forest at 5,000 feet and up altitude. Ooh. Why that high? Because at that height, it has the right water density and oxygen ratio in the wood to make a great sounding exotic koa guitar. Koa is an exotic wood. So what is the sound profile of a koa guitar? Well, if rosewood and mahogany had a kid, it would be koa. It gives the fundamentals of rosewood. It gives the pronounced wood sound of mahogany. It's a hardwood and an exotic wood, so it's very punchy and expressive. Let's listen to this all koa 724 CE. Awesome, dude. Awesome. You know, it's time for two more giveaways. Woo. Let's do it. Okay. We've got some more going on here. Two. Two. <laughs> one more time, one zero two five seven seven two. Going once, going twice. Dead. So all right. <laughs> we got one zero two five seven seven three. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> one more. And we also got one zero two five seven six four. All right. How are we doing so far? You guys having fun? Yeah? All right. Uh, we're, we're trudging towards the end here, about another 15 minutes. And when we do get to the end, again, we open it up for what we call the petting zoo. That means you can grab these guitars and pet them and pick the one out that you want. Again, it's 10% off if it's a Takate made guitar and 15 off on an American made guitar. Now we're running into the COVID era. Ugh. Okay, that was a tough time for all of us, especially in the instrument world. Everybody, actually, you know, everybody being at home and doing podcasts and everything. We sold a lot of instruments, and lucky for us, a lot of people picked up guitar as a means of getting through that COVID. Uh, you know, having to stay at home, and it was great because a lot of new guitar players are now 
turning into musicians. Andy's answer, Andy Powers, during that time was very precarious, was to build a guitar that the average person could afford with everything that makes a great guitar, but without any of the frills. A great playing Taylor guitar, hence the American Dream 14 CE. Now, this particular one is a 50th anniversary one, right? A limited guitar. It's a walnut back and sides, which is a really good tone wood. It's an outdoorsy kind of hardwood, good fundamentals, a nice sunburst top. It's different than what we normally use in that it has a eucalyptus fretboard and a eucalyptus bridge. Now, why eucalyptus? It's very sustainable. It grows fast. We can use it. A lot of guitar makers use eucalyptus. We use it sparingly. We're using it in this guitar to make it very affordable. It's $19.99. Uh, you know, what a great price point for a made in the USA Taylor guitar. It's got the ES2 pickup system in it, like I mentioned earlier. And uh, let's give it a listen, Jonathan. This is a great looking guitar, isn't it? Yes. Totally killer guitar. Uh, why don't you hang on to that oh, wow. just for a second. This is another one of our 50th anniversary guitars. It's called a 217E. It's a dual slope shoulder dreadnought in our Grand Pacific line. It's made in Tecate, Mexico. This guitar is a rosewood back and sides with a spruce top, obviously a sunburst top. It's a, a great player guitar. It's a full body size guitar. Notice it's got a white nut up here. Our Takati guitars are identified generally, if you're looking at a wall of guitars, if you see a white nut, those are guitars that are made in Takate. This particular guitar is an X-Brace guitar. Remember I said earlier that we still make X-Brace guitars. Our Takate guitars are generally X-Brace. And again, just like the Mini, it doesn't have back bracing because the back is bowed a little bit, helping with the structural integrity of this guitar to really beat the elements. I mean, I've taken these Takate guitars. I live in Florida. We use dehumidifiers down there, <laughs> right? So, I mean, I live down by Miami. It's nuts. So uh, they really wear well going from hot to cold in your car, in your air conditioning, back and forth. You don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, again, it's a 50th anniversary guitar. This one would be 10% off. And one of the best parts about this guitar, it's $14.99. Unbelievable for this quality of guitar, for a 50th anniversary guitar. Wait till you hear this. Unbelievable.
All right. I got a few minutes here. Let's do three more raffles. Three. What? Three. What? Three. Crazy. I know. <laughs> Well, not the grand prize yet. Somebody in here is going to win that GS Mini. Woo! Woo! Uh, we got a 1025760. All right. We got a 1025766. Nobody? Going once. All right. 0025766. He left. <laughs> Dang. We got a 102575. Right here? Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, everybody. And then we got a 1025774. All right. All right. While he's getting you all set up, we're almost to the end here. I want to talk a little bit uh, more about our amplifier that we've been listening tonight. How do you guys like the sound of that amp? Sounds good. Sounds good, right? Yeah. We just released this amp in January. It's called the Circa 74. It's a new addition to the Taylor line of products. It is 150 watts. It's a 112 coaxial speaker, meaning that it doesn't have a separate harsh tweeter a lot of guitar amps do, especially acoustic amps. It's a one speaker unit. Uh, it is all mahogany casing made out of, of course, we want to be sustainable at Taylor. So this is using our extra wood at our Taylor factory. It does come with the stand. And what we're going to do is play this beautiful Koa guitar. May I? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. A K24. This is what we call the coup de gras. All right, this is near the top of our line of our production guitars. We played an all Koa guitar before. This one is the Builder's Edition version. Just to remind you of the Builder's Edition, it comes with the extra accoutrements, the chamfered or beveled edges, the armrest, the cutaway, the beveled uh, sides of the fretboard, the upgraded tuners, the silent satin finish. This is all. Koa top, back, and sides from the island of Hawaii. A nice super inlaid vine inlay on this. Also inlay around the front and the back sides so the player knows it's there. Ooh, right? Yeah. Ah. Now, again, it's an exotic hardwood. It's going to be punchy. It has great fundamentals, very expressive. Let's play this one. And again, we're miking it through a condenser mic through the Circa 74, which, by the way, is $11.99 if you're so inclined. It's a nice retro look. As you can see, it only weighs about a little under 25 pounds. So it's easy to take around, perfect for the singer-songwriter, or in your office, or in my office. <laughs> All right, have at it.
we're gonna plug this one in. Cool. All right. Can you go ahead and plug it in? Yeah, or? go ahead and plug it in while I'm. What you guys think? Huh? Rocking? Give the show off. All right, we're we're running we're running towards the end here. We're almost over. Uh, you've heard the amplifier with the microphone, but I've talked about the ES2 pickup, right? It's got the parametric EQ up here for treble and bass. It's got the three posts right behind the saddle over here, okay? Uh, I thought it would be appropriate for you to actually listen to that pickup plugged into our amplifier. Let's turn this down. And you got your level up here? Yep. Give it a shot. All right. Uh, we want you to hear what it sounds like with the ES2 pickup plugged right into the Circus 74. All right, go for it. I'm playing flat right now. I'm going to kick up the bass just a little bit. Add a little reverb. also has Bluetooth, so you can Bluetooth in your backing tracks if you're so inclined, or play music uh, during your break. It also has two inputs. It's got a microphone guitar input and a separate uh, phone plug input, so you can sing or song right, sing and play through the amp at the same time. It's a great versatile amplifier, again, $11.99. Uh, we hope we give it, you give it some consideration. Jonathan. Wow. What do you guys think? Did we do okay? Huh? All right, online. We hope you liked it online. Uh, it's my pleasure right now to introduce Baxter, the owner of this fine establishment. We're going to have you pick the winner. It's time for the GS Mini winner. Oh, boy. And again, a round of applause for my partner, Jonathan, playing here. Thank you. Great job. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> yeah. It's a, nice, it's a nice reward there. Yeah. Now, we, we got all the tickets in there, right? Yeah. Dylan, everything's in there, so. Got to do it again. Got to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Oh, by the way, the GS Mini does come with a case. You got the gig bag with it. Last four numbers, five, seven, seven, one. God. No. Uh, oh, no, I got five, seven, seven, one. Holy shit! I just won a guitar. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You willed it into being. Oh. <laughs> I want to thank my mom for having me. Uh, I want to thank Jesus. I want to thank the people on YouTube for watching and uh, <laughs> the guys at the casino for having us. Dude, yeah. congratulations, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that couldn't have been better. You want to say I'll talk to your mic. Thank you everybody for watching. Thanks everybody for coming here. That, that was awesome. I'm so glad you won. Dude, I felt you like I'm cracking me up the whole night. No. That was <laughs> That's two new guitars for you I today. I got two new guitars today. It was meant to be. <laughs> it was meant to be. Well, thank you everybody for coming out too. And if you guys want to hang out, we're going to be talking about guitars, playing guitars all night. Have fun. We got beer. 
And then you have right. more beer. Uh, so, um, <laughs> and then thank John for coming out. And thank you. Derek and Sean, thanks for yeah. manning the computers there. You know, guys, thanks for joining us. Play guitars, have fun. Play them, do it. Guitar, right there you go. Do the thing, do the thing. That's how we end this casino. Look, look, I would happily. <laughs> hey, thank you everybody online. Uh, I'm going to be hanging out. Thank you all for being here. Let's play some guitars. I paid two dollars. All right. Perfect. I told y'all was going to need a guitar with that tuner. I told you. Now you're getting amped. Thank you. What's thank crazy you. is the last time I was here, I said what? I need a strap and an acoustic. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was very nice, that man. Was that was great. awesome. Uh, Thank you, sir. Hey, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. Hope you learned something. <laughs> I can't believe it was really you and you didn't know it. That's awesome. There's one right behind that counter. We should bring it out. Hey, Derek, are we, uh, am I good? Nope. Work on guitars, but I have a 326 CD.